this is Luton, and uh, this is some gameplay that we had recently. Now uh, you'll have to excuse me if I ramble a bit here and there because um, my uh, my commentaries like this are quite different to my scripted commentaries, um, but we'll see how we go along. So this video really, um, I wanted to put this up because it was it was quite an unbelievable round really. Um, not from my point of view, but more from the point of view of what the enemy team were using and their tactic. Um, I recently did my shotgun video, which some people might have seen, and in that I was talking about all the different shotguns and their uses, etc, etc, and generally what I thought. And um, I did say that the USAS, I didn't consider it an overpowered weapon, and um, I still don't consider it um, an overpowered weapon um, in the right context. However, when the entire enemy team are using it, it can, especially in a confined space, it can become a little bit overpowered. However, I still don't have a problem with that. It's very annoying, and in my opinion it's pretty cheap, but I don't have a problem with it. And the reason for that is because I believe that with the right attitude and gameplay, you can overcome anything. Okay. And if anything, you should consider it a challenge, yeah, um, because it's good to be challenged. Um, sometimes, you know, when we. By the way, I just want to say as well, I know that I suck at this game. <laughs> um, I really do get myself handed to me multiple times in this game. But as I say, as I've said before, um, and people might have watched my other stuff. Um, I, I'm not one of these people who chooses their best games and their best gameplay and they put it up all the time. I, I'll just put up any gameplay that I think is interesting that I want to talk about. Um, you know, there's been loads and loads of people who've made comments on my videos. Some go, oh, you can play well. Some play, you can't play well. I really don't care. You know, <laughs> um, I'm just interested in playing with my team and, you know, trying to get what I enjoy out of the game. And um, the other thing is with Battlefield, sometimes you have to kind of kamikaze yourself in because often your team will just not. Um, I think many, many people will know the way Battlefield goes and the way the game plays, that so many situations you will see your whole team sitting back, scared to go forward. I never understand why, because you just die and respawn, so what's the big issue, really? Um, I mean, this is, this is what I'm doing right here, just kind of throwing myself onto the target. You've got to get it armed, you know? you just got to get in there, get it armed, and... This guy here, Dapper, he's in my clan, he's uh, quite a good player and um, he's the only one on the other enemy team who's really kind of constructively covering that area, going for the target, going for the disarm, so kind of frustrating that he ended up on that team. But yeah, you've just really got to get in there and um, sometimes that means that you will get killed a lot. I mean, you look at my guys here, see these blue guys, they're just kind of sitting back at these rocks and that's not going to help anyone. Someone was saying the other day, what's suppression? That is suppression. So the USAS section of this video anyway comes up later on. It's not yet. It's on the, um, not even the next base. They, they kind of start to switch out on the next base and then it goes on to the third. Um, I'm using a lot of smoke and smoke is really good, but it does have its downside because it kind of advertises the fact that you're trying to take that target. Um, it kind of says, hey, we're close and we're about to take it. Uh, on, the other, on the other hand, it does mean that you can approach it, arm it, and that's half of the thing, you know. If you can get it armed, you can sit near it, throw grenades, keep it covered, um, especially in a game like this. And you can see that our guys are kind of getting in behind, covering it. I managed to take that guy down, which he was irritating me. <laughs> But, I just will say as well, um, you know, arming the target is no good if there's still 10 guys standing on it. So, you do have to obviously clear the area. Um, it's all about balance, you know, everything is about balance. Everything, I don't want to get all worldly, but like people will say, everything in life is about balance, you know. People are always going about food and stuff like that, and, you know, too much of one thing is never good. So, you know, if you, if you run and arm the target too much, you know, but you don't kill anyone, well you're never going to win if you kill too many people but don't arm the target while well, the game's going to finish, so you have to do both. 
which is why you need to be aware of what's going on. And, and many people often are not aware of what's going on. They don't watch what's happening with their team. They're like tunnel vision with what they are doing. They don't look and see what other people are doing. And that is such an important thing to see what your team are doing. And um, I say this to my guys all the time. If you're defending or attacking, look to your left, look to your right, look at your map. Look what I mean. I know in, uh, if you play hardcore a lot, you don't have the map, but that's because you know you obviously should have better communication, etc. Um, wouldn't be hardcore if it wasn't you know different, would it? So we're just moving up here. Um, Metro is kind of an interesting map, really, because there is no real right or wrong route to approach these targets from. If you're wondering why I'm sitting back a little bit from my guys, it's because I don't want to move in one big group and then just get mown down. I'm also kind of aware, look, if you look at the map right now, we've got guys in the tunnel on our on, on the right there, and we've got our guys moving up on the left. No one was covering this kind of door section in the middle, and I didn't want someone to come out that door. You see on, the, on the, my map now. I didn't want someone to come out from behind and cut all my guys down, and I, th I think if I remember correctly, because I remember I played this the other day, yeah. That is exactly what was about to happen. So keeping everyone covered from all different directions, you see, is very, very important. Is that guy still in there? I'm um, using the G36 right now, it's um, generally a pretty good weapon, it's quite powerful, good range, it's just pretty generally good all round I think. Uh, recoil can be a little bit heavy sometimes but as long as you're kind of aware of that it can be not too bad of a, not too much of a problem I should say. I'm just trying to move up lately to the target here. You see my guys are in there and stuff, I'm not trying to get too far in straight away because I don't want to just kamikaze in. <clears throat> now, I was actually saying to my guys in game about this and it, it's something that majorly irritates me and I can you know, talk about this right now. On these little rooms here, every game without fail, what you have is the target armed and three or four people sitting in there. Now, if you have nobody sitting outside, those guys inside are dead, and if you look look behind me right now, they all just got killed. What you need to do to secure these rooms is have people outside controlling the corridor, okay? And then maybe one person inside as a backup, okay? You can hear right now, the USAS is out. Oh, come on. <laughs> Shoot, like, all around him. Okay, so again, back what I'm doing. Just sit back down here and do this. Take them out, okay? Because very often, they don't seem to... People don't expect you to be waiting like this to defend it, okay? Look at them, they're like ants, okay? Now, if you think that you're going to be able to defend the room by sitting in it against all these people, all, if they're... If they're a half intelligent team, what they will do, throw grenades in, throw grenades in, shotgun, shotgun, machine gun, come in, they'll clear that room out and you know you'll you'll lose it, okay. You can you can manage with one or two people inside in the corners prone or something like that, but no more. Um, you'll be a lot more successful if you have people outside covering the corridor, preventing them from getting there, okay? Because not only does it is it more effective? It will give you a buffer, you know? Because it allows you to kind of delay them getting there, which will then allow you obviously to, to destroy it more effectively. Now this is where things start to go horribly wrong. This is possibly one of the most horrible bases in Battlefield 3, I think, for Rush, in my opinion. You got three main entry points, all of which can be easily well covered. 
Let's just keep an eye on the map here whilst I'm moving up, okay? Watch what's going on. Two to three of my guys forward on the target. None of those guys moving up. None of the enemy moving up. And I was thinking right now, okay, it's not too bad. We got one armed and I took out a couple of guys. I was thinking this won't be too bad. I mean, they're camping, but, you know, they're, well, they're defending, which is what you should do. I don't like it when people say they're camping on rush because you're not camping, you're just defending the target, which is what you're meant to do. So yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking it's too bad right now. Oh, and if anybody's wondering why I'm kind of using rockets quite um, over the top, I was trying to get my 50 kills. <laughs> if I wasn't trying to get my 50 kills, I would have been... Um, Changed out with uh, my assault class again. So again, we're kind of not totally overwhelmed. We're making some steady progress. Not a brilliant idea for these guys to be kind of sitting four on a corner, though. I'm having a bit of an issue shooting through that cover there because it's uh, interfering with the. I probably should have changed out to kind of two burst here. Okay, now here's where things start to go wrong. Right now, I need one or two of those guys. And look, that guy's using frag at range with the USAS. Oh, frag, sorry, I was getting confused. I thought he had buck. I was thinking, wow, that's impressive with buck at that range. No, he's using frag. And, um... I was trying to think... Oh, yeah, a good example. When I used to play um, some COD on Black Ops, and uh, you'd have the, the shotgun there. And you'd have to find that when one person starts using a shotgun and they're doing okay with it, other people notice this and they start to use it and then more and more and more people use it. And if you start to hear and listen around, pretty much mostly all you can hear is the shotgun. This guy's got it, look, I just saw it. And after a while, all you can hear is that gun. And I think the difference is that you can use this gun kind of well, like I say, like a suppression. And I think, like I've said before, I mean, I don't really mind the USAS in terms of the way it functions right now, because it's it's quite a powerful killing tool, but you, the guys using it often get out of ammo pretty quick. Um, but I think that possibly... Again, I, I say I'm not really a big fan of changing things around because I, I prefer to just deal with stuff as it is. But you could just kind of reduce its its damage a little, make it more of a splash suppression device, you know. But meh, it's whatever, you know. And normally I don't say how these how these these games kind of go, but we win this round, so we managed to overcome this. And if you look, yeah, one, two, three guys using it. This guy's got the buck. I knew someone had the buck, that's why I kind of got confused before. Jesus. Sitting on top of each other in this kind of proximity is never going to be a good thing. And, and my kind of point is this, look at these guys, look what they're doing. You've got about five or six guys, all in very, very close proximity. They're not really controlling anything. They're just literally spraying their gun and mopping up anyone that comes kind of vaguely near to them. Um, and that's why I say, you will get people using this gun like this, but with no disrespect to them, they're playing kind of stupid. Because they're not controlling any entry points for this area, they haven't pushed they haven't pushed forward, they're sitting on the target. The problem with that is once you get killed off the target, once you once you get cleared out the area, it will get armed and controlled and you won't be able to get onto it again. What you always should do is try and push forward a little. Not not like too far, because again, if anyone's watched my tactics video talking about the golden circle thing of you need to be within a certain range so that you can run back and disarm it. If you go too far forward, then you can't do that. 
Okay, now we've got the charge placed. And the reason we've got the charge placed here is we've just managed to kind of clear them up wave after wave after wave, you know? Just make some decent progress. Come on. I was getting really angry at this point. I was just like trying to take down anything near me. <laughs> so as I say, most of the team there most of the enemy team with USAS here. Look, he's got it. Oh no, the guy doesn't behind. But yeah, this really was just the the best example that I think I've seen so far of of people just overusing that gun. Up until now, I hadn't really seen this kind of level of gameplay, but worryingly, it's kind of increasing. And I think everyone would be lying to say it's not irritating. And it, it is irritating. I think it kind of disrupts... Oh yeah, big error by me there. Not checking my corners as I went around there. I was just kind of wandering along like la 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 la. But yeah, and um, you know, same thing, played a couple of games this week, and um, same thing, USAS just getting used. Oh, these goddamn things, they always really irritate <laughs> Those fences always annoy me. Unless you get like a proper run up, you can't just kind of step over them. And like, every time I go up to them, I just sort of try to jump over, I get stuck. I'm like, this is only a meter fence, how can I not get over it? Try it, okay, try it for yourself in game. If you come up to those fences, take a run up at it, and then don't take a run up at it and see see the difference. Okay, so that was this game. Shocking play by me. I picked up a couple of lucky, you know, spray multi-kills, but whatever to that. Um, I think the second base was, was, the, <laughs> was the most tactical bit. The rest of it was just, without wanting to swear too much, the rest of it was just a bit of a... Clusterfuck. So there we go, that's the game, that's the USAS. Um, I'm pretty sure people will have some interesting comments to make, so thanks for watching guys. <laughs>